today we're going to talk about uh, the piriformis muscle and how it relates to yoga particularly. But I'm going to give us some background on the piriformis muscle so we can understand um, what's happening. And if somebody comes in and they say they have sciatica or piriformis syndrome, then we have some tools to help them. Uh, so first, let's just get our landmarks situated here. So we're looking at the back of the body here. And what you see is this is the sacrum, which is partially fused, and then the coccyx, which is our tailbone down here. This is L4, L5, so these are our lumbar spine. And the yellow piece is the spinal cord, and these are the nerves coming off. So when we talk about the piriformis muscle, a lot of times people say they have sciatica. True sciatica is an inflammation of the sciatic nerve. Now here is the sciatic nerve. It's one of the biggest nerves in the body. It's about the width of my thumb. It's really thick. And it comes through off of the spinal cord right here and it comes down. Now, it goes through the valley in between the piriformis muscle. So when sometimes somebody says, oh, I have sciatica, they really mean they have piriformis syndrome, which is a spasming, a tightening of the piriformis muscle that's pushing into that sciatic nerve. Now, the difference between true sciatica and piriformis syndrome is in true sciatica, you have pain that radiates all the way down to the pinky toe, beyond the knee. In piriformis syndrome, most times the pain will be localized to the buttock region and only go to about the knee. This is one of the ways in which you can determine whether you have true sciatica or not. Either way, the sciatic nerve is involved, uh, whether it's piriformis syndrome or true sciatica. So where this gets interesting in particular, so there's six lateral rotators of a hip. For the hip to laterally rotate, that's like a position that we would do for like this, like double pigeon. Like there's a lateral rotation here of my hip, right? So this rotation of my hip, this external rotation, is going to uh, require recruitment from the six deep lateral rotators of the hip, which piriformis is one of them. These are all under your glute, your glute max, right? That, underneath that, there's these six deep muscles. And one of the main ones is the piriformis syndrome. And this is the one gets a lot of press because it is intimately connected with your sciatic nerve. So, why is it so connected with the sciatic nerve? Here's the piriformis right here. And it connects from the anterior portion of the sacrum. So the front of the sacrum, look at that. Okay, so this is the front view now. So this is your piriformis muscle attaching to the front area of your sacrum. But you can see it's over here and it connects to your femur head, the greater trochanter. So this comes through and here's your sciatic nerve. Now all it takes is a little bit of spasm of pushing that muscle out a little bit and you're gonna get a lot of pain right here that goes through the low back. So this muscle goes into spasm, locks down the sciatic nerve, that's gonna elicit some pain. So we can see on the, on the, on the model of why that is. Now, there is a connection to the leg right here. Now this would be where the glute max would be, and that's why you have pain in the butt, right? Is because this is where you're feeling it, because it's coming from here. So this piriformis muscle, there's, there's poses like pigeon that are great. Um, the, the one that I did, some people call that fire log pose, or back release pose in forest yoga where you make a figure four with your legs. The best pose that I found is to lie with your butt real close to the wall, legs up a wall. And this helps to really give that piriformis muscle a chance to relax. So um, I hope this helps. Check out some of the other videos that we have. We have full classes. We have things on yoga philosophy, on kirtan and bhakti. Um, please hit subscribe and I'll like the videos. It really helps out a lot. Hope to see you soon.